For some of the 300,000 Americans suffering from the neurological disorder dystonia, the FDA has just approved an implantable pacemaker, which could tame the involuntary muscle contractions, which makes the severest form of dystonia so debilitating. It all started several years ago when a young athlete suffering from dystonia had an experimental pacemaker implanted in a surgery which transformed his life. We get his story now from medical editor Dr. Tim Johnson in this edition of Dr. Tim on Call. For years, Emily and Ed Siewolinski thought they had a perfect little boy without a clue that their precious only child harbored an ailment so treacherous and mysterious it would eventually tear their world apart. In high school, Ed loved girls, sports, and computers. But something terrible was happening to his body. By the time he was 17 years old, his life as a normal teenager was over. He could get up and walk, but he'd be falling all over the place. This is what Ed's life had become. His muscles twisting and contorting his body into bizarre postures, crippling him with painful spasms and uncontrollable movements. Dr. Susan Baser, a neurologist at Pittsburgh's Allegheny General Hospital, was the doctor who finally gave Ed's nightmare a name. She said Ed was suffering from dystonia. It's a chronic disorder that makes muscles contract abnormally. Dystonia usually targets only one specific part of the body, and more than 300,000 people in America suffer from it. Ed had a rare form that affected his entire body. No one knows how he got it, and there was no cure. Dr. Donald Whiting, a neurosurgeon also at Allegheny General, proposed one last option, deep brain stimulation, DBS for short. He said the odds were only 50-50 it would work. So in the spring of 2000, Ed put his life in Dr. Whiting's hands and underwent brain surgery. Dr. Whiting screws a metal halo on Ed's head to help him navigate safely deep into Ed's brain. He believes that Ed's muscles are clenching so tightly and constantly because the nerve cells in his brain that control muscle movements are firing too fast. But there are millions of nerve cells in the brain and finding which ones are causing Ed's symptoms is like finding a needle in a haystack. The surgical team will actually try to find the abnormal nerve cells by listening to them with a thin wire that's been fitted with a tiny microphone that they will push deep into his brain. Nerve cells produce sounds each time they give off an electrical impulse. Those sounds from different parts of the brain are like fingerprints. Dr. Baser has been by Ed's side during the entire surgery. She waits anxiously as Dr. Whiting sends tiny volts of electricity to Ed's brain. Can this current actually reset Ed's brain and free his gnarled muscles? She flexes his wrist. Amazingly, it moves normally. The first time in nearly two years. Oh my gosh, it was dramatic. It was, I mean, it, it's hard to keep from choking up about it because he's such a nice kid. The doctors implanted two electrodes in the part of Ed's brain that causes his dystonia. These wires will now constantly emit a steady stream of electrical pulses that will allow his muscles to move freely. If the electrical pulses stop, the symptoms will return. These electrodes are powered by two small batteries that are implanted in Ed's chest. This is Ed just eight days after surgery. The turnaround is remarkable. DBS is, quite simply, working like a pacemaker for the brain. It doesn't cure his dystonia, but it controls it without destroying any brain tissue. He went from being a bedridden individual to a normal kid again. It's wonderful. I, I, I just thank God for, you know, giving this to me, you know. And Dr. Tim Johnson joins us now. Uh, Tim, these stories never cease yeah. to amaze me. And that was Ed speaking. That was the, Ed speaking. Uh, he was still on some medication, mm -hmm. so his speech wasn't quite as good as it is now. He's continued to improve. Uh, I saw some pictures recently of him uh, playing football with his friends. Wow. He graduated from computer school uh, four months ago, has a job as a computer program, getting better all the time. So it really, you know, I, I, I don't use the word lightly, but it was for him an absolute miracle. And it's not a cure. It doesn't treat the underlying disease because we really don't know what that is right. uh, but it controls it and these electrodes to the brain can be replaced over time as necessary uh, you haven't destroyed any brain tissue so if someday a good cure is found you can take these electrodes out but in the meantime they give him his life back and 
it is now available, this type of pacemaker, to others? So it's been uh, made available, approved for so-called humanitarian use, mm -hmm. that is for people with the most severe forms of the disease, like Ed. Estimates are that maybe four or 5,000 people a year will have these pacemakers now under this new approval. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Tim, thank you. Right. Always good. We'll be right back.